The Bomber Mafia. A Dream, a Temptation, and the Longest Night of the Second World War is a nonfiction book by Malcolm Gladwell, published in 2021. It explores the dueling philosophies regarding bombing in the U.S. military during World War II. The book is based on a series of podcasts Gladwell created for his show Revisionist History and is based on the hardcover first edition. The book focuses on the invention of the bombsite by Carl Norden, a Dutch national who was educated in Switzerland and immigrated to the U.S. Norden developed 64 algorithms to improve bombing accuracy, which was later used by the U.S. Navy and Army Air Corps. The Mark 15 bombsite was a 55-pound analog computer, and bombers were required to swear an oath to protect it with their lives if necessary. The pilots at the Air Corps Tactical School in Alabama were young, irreverent pilots who adopted the motto, We make progress unhindered by custom. Gladwell highlights the radical nature of these pilots by comparing the architecture of the three military branches, highlighting the differences in their beliefs and practices. The Bomber Mafia's theory emerged in response to a 1936 flood in Pittsburgh, which led to the closure of factories along the river and the collapse of the airplane industry. The Bomber Mafia proposed bringing just enough power at choke points to make surrender the only option, such as power plants, bridges, and aqueducts. This idea was later used in a 1941 report to the U.S. government which identified dozens of choke points in Germany that would force surrender if destroyed by bombs. During World War II, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill convinced American President Franklin Roosevelt to end their daytime bombing of Germany and join the British Royal Air Force in carrying out nighttime bombing only. They favored area bombing or morale bombing, which was widespread indiscriminate bombing over a large area intended to break the morale of the people and pressure the German government to surrender. Haywood Hansel, a member of the Bomber Mafia, was chosen to lead the effort to show the value of their approach. The Bomber Mafia had a moral component to their approach, focusing on sparing as many lives as possible rather than embarking on widespread destruction and civilian deaths. Hansel sought a target that was vital enough to halt the German war machine if taken out, such as the German bombing of a Rolls-Royce factory in Coventry, England. Haywood Hansel, a major general in the Army Air Corps, was a practical and direct leader who made a significant impact during World War II. He devised a formation for bombers that protected them from enemy fighter planes and changed the way pilots flew in their bombing runs. LeMay led the way in his bomber. Not a single plane was lost, and more targets were hit. LeMay's role in the mission on Schweinfurt was to lead a first wave of decoy bombers in the direction of Regensburg, Germany's Messerschmitt aircraft factories. The mission was intended to draw heavy defense from the Nazi fighter planes, but the second wave of bombers took off hours late, leading to the death or capture of 552 crew members. The problem at the root of the dismal results was the Norden bombsite, which was theoretically sound but had several issues in the real world. The bomber mafia tried again that fall, despite the failure of the first run. The second attack did slightly better but did not halt production, resulting in heavy losses. The 8th Air Force commander Ira Eaker was reassigned out of England, and Washington changed tack and adopted British bombing methods. Gladwell discusses how true believers in any idea act in the face of evidence that their beliefs are wrong. LeMay was never a believer in the Bomber Mafia doctrine, and he was much too practical and focused on results. In 1944, the United States developed the B-17s with a round-trip range of about 2,000 miles, making them within striking distance of Japan from the Mariana Islands. General Hansel was dispatched to lead the bombing campaign against Japan with the newly formed 21st Bomber Command in the Marianas. The mission was an absurd one due to the scorching climate, lack of built infrastructure, and overloaded bombers. The 20th Bomber Command, headed by General LeMay, 
was based in Kolkata, India, and had to stop at a primitive airfield near Chengdu, China, due to the Himalayas and lack of aviation fuel. Hansel's first mission was to bomb the Nakajima Aircraft Company near Tokyo, which made the bulk of the engines used in Japanese fighter planes. However, they encountered wind velocity that seemed impossible, throwing off the accuracy of the Norden bomb site. A group of scientists and industrial leaders were tasked by the National Defense Research Committee to investigate better ways to burn things down. They discovered that a mixture of aluminum naphthenate and aluminum palmitate worked best for sustained burning, and they tested various gelled substances, eventually finding napalm, naphthenate plus palmitate. The members of the bomber mafia reacted to the napalm demonstration, believing it would make bombing more devastating and kill untold numbers of civilians. However, their method, precision bombing, was failing. In the fall of 1944, Hansel's bombing runs on Japan returned with scant results, and he was relieved of his command and turned over to Curtis LeMay. Curtis LeMay, a cold-blooded and ruthless general during World War II, faced similar challenges as Hansel in capturing individual targets in Japan. He found workarounds, such as flying low and using napalm incendiaries, to make his bombers more vulnerable to attack. LeMay's reputation is based on his cold-blooded and ruthless demeanor, but he also admitted moments of uneasiness when leading his crew in Germany. On March 9, 1945, LeMay launched Operation Meeting House, which involved 300 bombers dropping 1,665 tons of napalm on Tokyo. The result was devastating, with up to 100,000 people dying. LeMay continued his firebombing campaigns even after the two atomic bomb attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, arguing that the real work had already been done. LeMay's brutal approach saved lives by hastening the end of the war and avoiding planned amphibious landing and ground war on the Japanese islands. Estimates show that such an invasion would have led to hundreds of thousands of deaths on both sides. A naval blockade of Japan by the U.S. Navy would likely have resulted in widespread food shortages and starvation in the winter of 1946. In conclusion, Gladwell discusses the evolution of bombing techniques over the past several decades, highlighting the importance of precision in bombing. Today, a bomb can accurately take out one small part of a single house and the modern equivalent of the B-29 bomber, the B-2 stealth bomber, can even evade detection. This means that LeMay's blunt approach no longer needed to ensure the target was hit, making him the winner of the battle. If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.